Recently, these videos of mine seem to receive a lot of traction, but some of you still have follow-up questions like, can you talk more about your project and experience? Can't find an entry-level position after two years? Can you elaborate? Hey everyone, welcome back, and today I will attempt to share more insights, particularly about how to find an entry-level position with your BME degree or just a regular STEM degree. So in today's episode, I'll be covering the following topics. First, all STEM experiences I had in university before my first job. Second, types of skills you need to get in college. And lastly, where and how to look for your first job. Now let's dive right in. I've talked about my general academic background in these videos, so make sure you check those out because I think personal backgrounds are very important to bring up so that you can see a better picture of how I've progressed. And today I'll be sharing the detailed projects and experiences I haven't shared last time. So I got my bachelor's degree in chemistry and my graduate degree in biomedical engineering in the USA. And both of these schools are no brand name schools. And I had very little internship experience in my college years because I was focusing on taking more summer classes to speed up my graduation, mainly to save money. So in undergrad, I was involved in two research projects. One was using computational chemistry for an environmental project in the chemistry department. And the other one was in material engineering with the engineering department. I intentionally reached out and collaborated on this project because from a basic science degree, I knew I lacked the engineering side of things. And I was really aiming to join a PhD program directly after my undergrad. But some of you may already know, I eventually dropped out of it. So very briefly, the computational chemistry project is about using the NWCHEM computational chemistry software to calculate the binding energies of two molecule complexes, which are proposed to be a remediation for phosphorus pollution in water. So in this project, I learned the basics of using the Linux system, scripting, 3D molecular modeling, and of course, I've gotten all the other chemistry skills as an average student would, right? As for the materials project, our team casted a 3D design model in aluminum and tested its stress to strain ratio to explore the mechanical behavior of this particular alloy in this design. So this experience happened to be the most relevant of what I did in grad school, which is biomaterials and their mechanical profiles. And on top of research projects, I have two other part-time on-campus paid work experiences. So I was a TA for the general chemistry lab classes for a year and a half. So I helped set up the supplies, prepared reagents, assist the students during the lab, etc. I didn't have to fight too hard to get this role because I was in a good relationship with all my professors and I told them I needed this experience and they just gave it to me. And the other part-time slash internship experience was with a local family-owned pharmaceutical company that manufactures topical analgesic ointments. So my title was a quality control assistant and I did sample stability testing using HPLC. Honestly, I didn't learn a whole lot from this internship and I was basically doing the same thing every day after the initial training. And fast forward to grad school, I was a research assistant for the biomaterial and tissue engineering project. Details in this video, by the way. So I dissected mice, harvested mice tissues, did cell culturing, prototype scaffolds with different biomaterial formulations, tested them with a mechanical tester, worked with SEM fluorescent microscopy, and writing review papers. All right, and that's basically my whole academic career journey. And moving on to what STEM relevant skills you need to acquire during college. So first, I want to very briefly categorize the BME career outlook into three categories, manufacturing, science-based or R&D, and computer-based. So the first category is the biotech, pharmaceutical, medical device manufacturing industries. I am currently working in a biological product manufacturing lab, so I can share more details about this category. If you have worked in an engineering lab, I think GXP, including all of these requirements, are generally implemented, such as a clean room environment, aseptic and sterile techniques, strictly following and updating SOPs, 
quality control and assurance and regulatory compliance. Even though I don't have this certification, I would highly recommend getting a Six Sigma certification. So Six Sigma management techniques help companies streamline the production process, allowing them to make high quality products more efficiently. Most schools give students the access to LinkedIn Learning and you can get this certification here for free. Also, a day in the life in the GMP lab will be coming soon, so please stay tuned. So if you're searching your first job in this category, I would suggest searching keywords like manufacturing technician or associate or engineer, quality control, quality assurance associate or technician, biomedical instrument technician, field service technician, environmental monitoring, and upstream downstream technician. Look for second, third, or weekend shift positions if you can manage that, because based on my experience, if you're just starting out, it may be easier to get into those less desirable shifts because it's less competitive. And the second category is more science-based BME. I would say that this area will be more heavily involved with the web lab techniques like Western blotting, PCR, cell culture. Please see a comprehensive list here and some previous uh, research experience. So if you are someone who has more expertise in this category, I would suggest searching keywords like research tech, assistant associate, biotechnologist, medical lab scientist. In general, any sort of role with the technician keyword in it usually are entry level and requires zero to three years of experience with an undergraduate degree. And I would highly suggest you to look at all the university's BME or STEM labs in your city, university, local hospitals, and clinics. I am pretty confident to say that these types of organizations always need technicians. But one caveat is that these places usually don't pay well and have a high turnover rate. The last category is the computer-based BME such as bioinformatics and biostatistics. Unfortunately, I personally really don't know too much about this field because other than taking one bioinformatics class in grad school and it wasn't instructed well, I really don't have too much experience in this field. But as much as I know, this category usually requires a higher degree, like master's or PhD are what I've seen mostly, and it's the highest starting pay out of all the other BME divisions, as far as I know. So you will need more hardcore computer science skills than biological knowledge. And let's look at a few listings here. You can see that the minimal degree requirement is master's and programming languages such as R, Python, and sometimes even Java and C++. And you'll need data management skills like SQL, genomic skills like RNA sequencing. I would assume if you have all these skills listed and two to three research projects under your belt would be a great starting point. But anything beyond that, I really don't know too much about it. And here's the last golden tip I've discovered recently. I want to suggest you look for BME programs that include a mandatory or guaranteed co-op opportunity in their program because that would be a very crucial internship in your college career that will help you transit into a full-time job after graduation. And here are just a few schools I found. This one is from Northeastern University Department of Bioengineering. And here you can see uh, what employers they usually work with, employer types, and uh, job titles. And this one is from the University of Cincinnati. Here you can see a brief introduction about their co-op program, how much students can earn from their co-op programs, um, and who are they usually working with. 
how to find it. And lastly, I just want to briefly mention, and you probably already know or feel that the job market in 2024 has slowed down significantly as a whole. Enterprises are tightening their budgets by reducing labor, while schools are still pumping out new graduates, resulting in a huge supply and demand imbalance. And yet, this is something that's out of everyone's control. Biotech and pharmaceutical are definitely not the only ones get affected here. Everyone, regardless of industry, is affected to a certain level. I myself have been trying to find a more advanced role since the beginning of this year, and everything I've gotten so far are rejections or being ghosted. It's still very tough for someone who has an advanced degree and with a few years of experience. Well, I hope you'll stay strong, and I wish we all very good luck.